Craig Smoke. Yeah, I put a thread up. It's been over a week where I mentioned former Baylor, whatever sport it might be, those who, and we've had a bunch of people on the show from various sports, and I said, hey, name a name that we perhaps have not overlooked on purpose, but just give us some suggestions. And Darius Thompson's name came up two or three different times, and the former Baylor wide receiver joins us, Paul Catalina, David, and Craig Smoke on Sikkim 365 Radio. Darius, how you been? I've been great. How you guys doing? We're doing doing really well. Now, you went to, uh, was it SeaWorld late last week? Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, family and I, we drove down to SeaWorld for a few days just to, just to get away. Uh, we had a good time. It was, uh, you know, it was scorching hot, but, you know, it was other than that, you know, we had a great time. Do you have to wear one of those big, like, hunter hats when you're going out, to, like something like that that's beaming down on you like the sun like that? Uh, you know, I usually do, but I, I forgot it, you know, in the midst of uh, packing everything, you know, with the boys. Uh, but, you know, other than that, I was I was fine. You know, I've, I've been coaching for a while, so, I, you know, I get used to it. it. It wasn't that bad out there. Darius Thompson is our guest on Sikkim 365 Radio. Darius, you were here in the in the last couple of years of the Southwest Conference. What, what did we miss from those days of the Southwest Conference that, that maybe the Big 12's lost a little bit? I feel like that is uh, you had that uh, you had the rivalry and you really knew the teams and the schools. You know now it, it just it doesn't it doesn't seem the same. You know you know even though we had the you know the A and M the you know Texas and you know had the Rice. I feel like you really knew the, the teams and the schools. A lot of times you grew up playing against those guys and playing with those guys. It just um, now it, it it seems a little bit more spread out, not as, as as intimate as it was with the Southwest Conference. Describe uh, how you ended up in Waco to play your college ball. Um, I had a great uh, recruiter, uh, Larry Fedora, recruited me out of high school, and um, and I just I, I always had um, you know um, a thing for Baylor. My cousin went to Baylor. Renee Thompson, you know, mm-hmm. played in Baylor in the eighties, and so. I think from that I was always a fan, and and I and I saw um, tons of potential there. You know, the year before I came, um, they went to a bowl game. You know, freshman quarterback, you know, running back Gerard Douglas, uh, Douglas Jeff Watson. So you know, I, I saw a lot of young guys, and I saw a lot of potential. You know, in the team. When you mentioned your cousin Raina Thompson, he was. I when I think of him, I think of a guy that was a madman on special teams. Was that is that something you remember from him? Yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, you know, just really, you know, great athlete. You know, someone that you know that could run, and I and I think, uh, you know, he had a, a really great career. You know, and um, and I, it's just funny. I, I think you know, you never know what what could happen had he played another position besides corner because he was a good size and you know he was physical and tough. But that's you know, you think about his his career, definitely in NFL. That's that's what he was known for. Darius Thompson, our guest on Sikkim 365 Radio. Uh, Dave Aranda is starting year two. They've had a pretty good weekend with recruiting. Of course, you know what that means. It's guys that still have to sign eventually and then play. What are your uh, thoughts? Uh, you mentioned Larry Fedora, and he recruited you. What What do you th- you see now with young people and the recruiting process with list of the top 15 or the decommitments? Things have changed quite a bit. What do you see as a coach now with that? You know what? It, it's changed so much. And honestly, I, right now, I feel like it's hard for me to keep up. You know, you have guys that's, that's decommitting, you know, transferring. I, I think it, it, it's changing the game, you know, and I, it, it's hurting a lot of a lot of these young athletes coming out right now. If they're not, you know, rated, you know, really high coming out of their junior year, I think, you know, they're struggling. Like guys like late bloomers, you know, they're not getting the looks that they would usually get, you know, right now. And, um, I don't, I, I, I you know, I, I think I'm old school and it just, you know, you know, you get used to a certain way. And uh, I think right now it's, it's about, um, you know, I think we've always had those decommitments, but, you know, once you, you commit and you decide, you know, on that, you know, I think you should, you know, stick with it unless you have other reasons, you know, to legitimate reasons to back out of it. It's part of that though, because, and, and you see this as you deal with parents, that parents may be put unrealistic realistic expectations on the the process and they don't maybe go through the whole thing with their kids yeah i think so and i think a lot of times they they don't know and you know and a lot of times you know the parents don't know it and they listen to other outside influences and 
and um, and just just don't get it, you know. And um, you know, I see that, you know, I've I've been uh, you know coaching and teaching at the middle school level, which I love, and you know, and I and I see that there, you know, sometimes those parents may think, you know, that what position that their son is playing in middle school will affect high school. You know, which is, you know, as you know, it doesn't. You never know what they'll grow into and what they'll be. So I think a lot of times they, it's not enough patience in the process and just continue to work hard and, and let the chips fall where they may. Darius, do you uh, know Joey McGuire at all? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I've met uh, Coach McGuire a few times, uh, you know, when he was in Cedar Hill. You know, I would come through uh, yeah. and see him. So, yeah, I've, I've met him a few times. So okay. I'm, 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 I was excited, yeah, when, uh, you know, when he, uh, when he came to Waco, definitely. Yeah, I was just curious. I figured you probably had because, uh, you know, Cedar Hill alums uh, are proud of that program for good reason. But, uh, yeah, I mean, he's done an amazing job. And uh, what is it about just, uh, you know, seeing the Sean Bells, the Joey Maguires, the guys that kind of started to turn this corner? What did that mean to you seeing, you know, Baylor at a low point a few years ago and, and the fact that a lot of people came uh, over to Waco to try and, and rebuild this thing? And what do you think of the job that they've done? Um, obviously, you know, it, it was great, you know, seeing that, you know, that low point there, especially, you know, my last two years, we were, we were there, you know, and then seeing how they, you know, how they rose, you know, years later with, uh, coach Brown and, and, um, you know, then we hit a snag and, and, you know, uh, off a snag and, um, it looks like we're headed back in the right direction, you know, and I, I'm excited about it. You know, I, I just, I think, you know, um, just driving, you know, back home, you know, seeing the campus and seeing the stadium, you know, it's, there's there's excitement, you know, won a national championship, you know, I'm still talking about that, and you know, from my boys in basketball, I think we are there, we just have to stay the course. When you started your NFL career out of uh, Baylor, you were with Washington for, th- for the first couple of years, you didn't get to play much. Then you started yeah. playing, you didn't get many targets, but then your fourth year exploded. 53 catches, 773 yards, and four touchdowns. You end up in Miami. What what was the difference between years three and four in Washington for you? Um, you know, each year was a, a growing process for me. You uh, you know, I I think, you know, coming in my, my first year, I was, you know, extremely, you know, raw, but uh, just learning how to play the game and, and, and honestly, you know, building confidence, you know, um, I think those last couple of years, you know, I think we went two and nine at Baylor. You know, it was rough. You know, it can definitely, uh, you know, it can, it can, you know, mess with your psyche. And then, you know, being undrafted, and you know, definitely, you know, it can, you can kind of question some things. And so, I think those first couple of years for me were just learning, you know, to practice and, and you know, be a professional and and honing in on my craft. And uh, and then, you know, when I got uh, my third year with Marty Schottenheimer, that that group was great. You know, they. Um, really, you know, believed in me and, and, and started to say things like, you know, you could be a starter, you know, you should be a starter, you know, at times that I, you know, um, thought that, okay, maybe I can be a, you know, a good special teams player, you know, throughout my career, you know, but those guys put that in my, in my head. And I'm like, Oh, you know, I, you know, something I never really thought about. I'm like, Oh, I can actually be a starter in, in, in the NFL. And so coming in with that next year with coach for you, it really, you know, uh, you know, boosting my confidence where I was able to come out and, and get the opportunity from Coach Spurry. I feel like a lot of coaches don't give you that opportunity because uh, Spurry brought a lot of his guys in. But uh, I think he he put the best person out there. If you played, you worked, that's who that's who played. That's who started. You know, you were surprised he didn't become a better coach in the NFL? <sighs> yeah, you know, I, I, I am. Um, I... I I, I was a big fan of him, and uh, I, I think it's, it's it's a lot of different factors with you know involved in that, and mm-hmm. and I and I believe definitely the NFL defenses are a lot more complex, especially at that time that you know that he had really been involved with, you know, on the college level, and you know in the and the talent level is different. You know, you can get all the guys, and you know, most talented guys, like it's you know it's a, it's a different game, you know. But I, I really feel like had he given had been given a, a true opportunity to really, you know, you know, make some, get some guys in and grow them. I think they could have, could have been special there. Well, he was a little bit, a little bit ahead of 
the time because the offense that he was running and brought from Florida now, I mean, the NFL, you see, you know, Cliff Kingsbury and Sean McVay and all yeah. these guys are running offenses that are wide open like like Spurrier's was. It just wasn't yeah. his time. And and I, yeah. and I don't know, you know this because you saw it, but I wondered if he liked being an NFL coach as much as he loves being a college coach. I don't know. You know, I, I think uh, <laughs> I, I couldn't speak on that, but yeah. I, I definitely know that, you know, it's, it's different being an NFL coach, you know, than a college coach, but in the NFL, you know, you're dealing with grown men that have families and, you know, and there's certain certain ways that, that you speak to them and they speak to you than, than on the college level where, you know, you may be looked at as a, as a father figure, a mentor, you know, I think it's, it's different. And, you know, sometimes uh, it, you, it's hard to coach a, a 30-year-old, you know, 10-year vet the same as you would, you know, an 18-year-old college student. Mm-hmm. You played for Gary Comer at Cedar Hill. I actually know him pretty well. He is on our website, Sikkim365.com, Football Bob. He analyzes game tape and also kind of breaks it down uh, when an opponent's coming up and also breaks down what Baylor's done the week before when it comes to X's and O's. How much of an influence did – and I also play golf with him on occasion up at White okay. Bluff at Lake Whitney. How much of an influence did Gary Comer have in your career at Cedar Hill? Uh, it was a great influence. I, I, I really, you know, I always say that, you know, my, my time at City Hill was uh was was a was a great experience. I had, you know, I had I had good coaches. Um and and I think, you know, sometimes when you in an environment, you know, where you are treated in a certain way and you know, you respect it but you coach hard and, you know, you get to college it's like, oh, you know, it's an awakening, you know. You you know you hearing you know different type of language coaches you coaches coaching in a different type of way you know saying certain things uh, but uh, Coach Coleman was great we uh we had some some solid teams there you know and uh, unfortunately I feel like the year I left they had a really great team that you know had the chance to really go far um, in the playoffs but didn't make it yeah they, now they they. <laughs> Like they spit out state championships or their threats to be a state champion almost every year. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and then now it's just um, it's a culture. Mm -hmm. You know, we we definitely you know CDL definitely has talent, but it's 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 just a culture that a belief that they what they expect. You know, and it and it starts from middle school up, and it's and it's and it's, and it's just like it's there's no way to really explain it unless you're there and you see it and you're around it, then you know. You know, like these are the expectations. This is how it's done, and and everybody buys in. Speaking of culture, you brought up the basketball team a little bit earlier. Uh, did you ever, in your wildest dreams, think that Baylor basketball would win a national would win a national championship? No, no, I, I didn't, and uh, it was you know, especially you know, seeing the guys. You know, I was there with Brian Skinner. You know, he had a really mm -hmm. good you know NBA career, and it just. You know, seeing how the the, uh, the the boys team has grown over the years is amazing to me. And I like, you know, I was really excited. Not only did they win, but they dominated the game. You know, it. Um, I just feel like it, it. They it wasn't close. You know, they was. It just seemed like they was on another level. Yeah, they were. there was all that talk about the Gonzaga Baylor game. All that talk, yeah. and when like ten minutes after the game started, it was already over. Yeah. It was incredible. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was. So I heard that you were pretty damn good at blocking downfield. <laughs> what, what, where did that come from? Because that's a different mentality. Everyone looks at wide receivers because of what they do when they catch it or after they catch it. I mean, really, that's what the fans look at. But coaches and others who understand the game understand long runs usually happen because somebody's hustling down the field. But where did that mentality, when did that fit into, your, into who you were? You know, um, I think just growing up, you know, watching the game, I, you know, growing up, I was not a uh, Cowboys fan, but I love, you know, Mike Irvin, you know, and so I think just watching him play and I always try to, you know, emulate certain things he did just to, as far as the, you know, being physical and, you know, and going out and wanting to, you know, just kind of dominate your opponent, you know, and so that's, that's something that I just always wanted and, and tried to do. And so um, blocking was something that, you know, that, you know, I, I didn't have a problem with it. And, you know, they always say blocking is want to. You know, it's, so it's, it's about wanting, you know, wanting to dominate and want to completely take your man out of the play. And so that I, – I, I enjoyed that. You know, I really did. And, that, you know, during those times, we didn't throw the ball a lot anyway. So, you mm -hmm. know, we were running the ball quite often. So you 
you needed to block as a receiver. What? When did William Cole play? Uh, was it Harlan Hill or William Cole? Well, I know Cole was a great running a quarterback at uh, at Cedar Hill. When did who was who was the star when you were there? Besides you, uh, Har- Harlan Hill was a running back. He yep. was a year year behind me. Yeah, he was really 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 good. Yeah, I think yeah, I he think, was a year behind me. I think Cole was a little bit later on. Back that's when one of the Joey McGuire teams as well. That was like ten years later. Yeah, was like, yeah, he yeah, was he yeah. was unbelievable. Now here's a note from Coach Calmer. He was one of the greatest big brothers I've ever seen. He really took care of his little brother, Julian. Yeah, 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 I tried to. Yeah, Julian is uh, uh, not so little now. He's 30. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> big Julian. But, uh, yeah, yeah, he, he's grown now. But, it, yeah, he. Um, I'm 14 years older. So, yeah, he was uh, my freshman year. He was a baby, so he was born. So, yeah, he was, uh, you know, always around. But uh, definitely, you know, I always try to, you know, keep him around, keep him involved and, and – uh, and what we were doing, you know, and sports wise, family wise, just you know, I would try to keep up with him. What do you see in Dave Aranda? Uh, you know, I don't know. I, I hopefully that you know this year that we can uh, continue to grow. You know, I, I think that's the thing. I think we need to we need to be consistent. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and what we're doing, and, and and then I think you consistent, then you continue to get better. You know, every week, you know, we can't, you know, be up and down. I think that that definitely will hurt the program. So, uh, I don't. I'm hopeful. You know, hopeful that you know we can get better this year and we can be consistent. And that's that's really what you know what I'm looking for. Then these guys continue to grow and and uh, we can get it back to where you know to where it was years ago. And you're still with uh, you, are you with the Mansfield School District. Yes, yes, I am. And and what tell everyone where you're at. Tell everyone what you're doing. You mentioned coaching. I'm, yeah, I'm uh, the boys' uh, athletic coordinator at uh, middle school, uh, Howard Middle School in Mansfield. Um, coaching football and track, and um, I, I'm I'm really, you know, uh, I'm enjoying it. You know, I'm, I I love the I love to be able to still spend time, you know, with my family and still do something that that I love. You know, working with kids and you know, and coaching. You know, I love the game, so I'm. I'm at a good place right now where, um, like, to me, the main thing was being able to have that time to spend with my family. That's awesome. Darius, thanks for your time, man. Appreciate you being a part of the show. Okay, appreciate it. Darius Thompson, former beta wide receiver, played with Washington. His third third and fourth year really got really good. His fourth year with Washington, eventually with the Dolphins for a couple of years as well. And uh, played at Cedar Hill. And, of course, they eventually became a monster with, uh, with Joey McGuire, now Baylor linebackers coach, and what he did at, at Cedar Hill. Melissa Joe.